Hello, this is Jeffrey T. Bertiller, back with another Service Management Leadership video. We thank you for joining us on our YouTube channel. Hope you'll look around some of our other videos. Today's video is the third in our series for SIAM, introducing how to set up a SIAM, Service Integration and Management, program. And so, when we consider SIAM, we have to use metrics to determine a few things. And this is really interesting to me. Hopefully it is to you as well. And so when we consider metrics, we have to think, what are we measuring? Why are we measuring those? And so this will help us understand what services do we want to keep in-house? Which ones do we allow to go to a third-party vendor? And so let's look through a few several different things we may want to measure and put metrics to. Number one, the cost of each service. We care about what is the cost of each service so we know if we are doing it, supporting it, maintaining it efficiently in-house. Are we doing such a good job of providing value to the business on this service that there's no way it can be outsourced? Or is it more expensive than the level of service we're offering. Number two, the quality of each service. And I don't mean through SLAs, we'll get through that in a minute, but are the customers seeing value from these services? Are they high quality in terms of what the business is looking for? Number three, better that way, three, the internal skill set supporting each service. And so we may use metrics to look at do we have the right skills to take a long-term approach to supporting this service in-house? Many times we don't, but we can look at it from a contractor short-term perspective if we need to, but this is outsourcing. So number four, the performance of each service against their SLA. That's big, isn't it? Because if we're not meeting our SLAs internally, why not push it out to an, a vendor and hold them against that SLA that we have with the business? Sounds like a great idea. So this is why many companies want to have SLAs before they consider outsourcing. Number five, integrations between services that may be difficult to untangle. Be hard to put a metric to this, but consider whether it's through your CMDB or other type of architectural document, how the integrations between your services, because if you outsource one, what does it do to another? How about if you outsource two to two different vendors? How are those integrations being maintained? Here's a good one. Number six, how about your future business needs? If we understand the future needs of our business, and we can put metrics to it so we can see the requests are going whew, sky high, or they're going down, maybe that helps us consider what do we want to keep in-house or what are we just fine letting go to a third party. Next, strategic services which may need to remain in-house. These could be due to regulatory, due to compliance, due to even strategic to our business, our core business. We may need to keep some of these in-house just so we, may, we keep in control, right? And lastly, we talk about regulatory and compliance requirements that may require a service to remain in-house. And so think of your SOX, your, your PCI, your PI, NERC and the electric utility. There's plenty of different compliance aspects and regulatory as well. And so we need to consider metrics and which is an unbiased, objective way to measure. And that's what we need to do. This is Jeffrey T. Fertiller. Thank you for joining us on our YouTube channel. Please like or share the video. Subscribe to our channel. Leave me feedback below or connect with me on LinkedIn. I'd love to hear from you. I hope you have a great, great day. Bye.